This is going to be a study on what Calvary shows us about hell. Jesus Christ took my sin and he took my hell. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by him. He is the only way out of hellfire. He is the only man who lived a perfect life so that he could get us out of hell. He is our propitiation, meaning he was my substitute and he appeased the wrath of God for me. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary to pay my sin debt. And this death at Calvary pictures what it will be like for the sinner who actually does go to hell. So we see number one, it pictures a sinner in hell because of the wrath of God on sin that was on Jesus Christ when he was on the cross. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. There is no denying that Jesus Christ became sin for us. Every sin that was ever committed was laid on the Savior. God Almighty has a cup. And the more sin that goes on, the fuller the cup will get. And this is the cup of God's wrath. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, this cup was poured out on the Savior. Jesus Christ prayed in Matthew 26, 42 to let this cup pass from him. He wasn't trying to get out of dying. He just didn't want to be separated from the Father. Jesus Christ took the wrath of God so that you wouldn't have to face the wrath of God yourself. He drank the cup that was full, the cup that was full of the wrath of God for sin. And you can see examples of this in Revelation 14.10. It says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. So the Bible talks about that cup of God's wrath. And the sinner in hell will drink the wine of the wrath of God. He has rejected the Savior. He rejected the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And now he will be tormented in the presence of the Lamb. And John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And Jesus Christ took that wrath for us. The moment we believed on Jesus Christ, we got out from under the wrath of God. And how blessed are we because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God is a consuming fire. Exodus says the Lord is a man of war. God isn't a fairy in the clouds that lets everyone enter into heaven. He isn't going to change his mind and just let everybody out of hell one day. If you go to hell, you will stay there forever and you will burn and feel God's wrath on sin. But thank God you're saved because if you're saved, then you're justified. I'm justified, meaning justified never sinned. I have the blood of Jesus Christ that makes me justified and delivers me from wrath. Romans 5, 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, number one, the cross, Jesus dying on the cross, pictures a sinner in hell because the wrath of God was poured out on him while he was on the cross. And number two, we see that Jesus Christ's crucifixion pictures hell because of his thirst. There's going to be a lot of thirsty sinners in hell. John 19, 28 says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be, filled, might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. That's what Jesus said on the cross. And then the rich man, the rich man in Luke 16, he begged for a drop of water on his tongue while he was tor being tormented in hell. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Jesus Christ took that thirst that we would have experienced in the lake of fire, 
and he is the only way to quench the thirst inside of every person. Deep down inside every person, there is something missing, and this void down inside can only be filled by the Lord Jesus Christ. John 7, 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God Almighty was manifest in the flesh and took your thirst when he died on Calvary. He is the living water, but many will reject this living water and they will go to hell. Jeremiah 2.13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. So we see that the cross, Jesus dying on the cross, it pictures a sinner in hell, and that the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus Christ while he was on the cross, and the wrath of God will be poured out on the sinner while he's in hell. Hell is where the anger of God is kindled, the Bible says. And not only this, it pictures the thirsty sinner in hell because Jesus Christ said when he was on the cross, I thirst. And next we see the cross pictures hell because in hell the sinner is forsaken. Psalms 22 and verse 1 says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? And that's what Jesus Christ said when he was on the cross. When Jesus died on Calvary and took the cup of wrath on sin, fellowship between him and the Father was temporarily broken. And many will only teach that hell is, is just separation from God. And it is separation from the love and mercy and grace of God. But to only teach that it is separation from God is being unfaithful to what the Bible actually says about hell. The sinner is already separated from God. He wants to be separated from God. He wants to live how he wants to live, and he wants to be his own final authority. The threat of being separated from God is really no threat to a lost person. Although hell is separation from God, it isn't separation from his anger and his wrath. Deuteronomy 32.22 says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn into the lowest hell. The sinner in hell is forsaken. He is abandoned and deserted. And that is because there is no hope in hell. If you died right now without the Lord Jesus Christ, then God has a place to toss your wicked soul to be burned. And God has no use for a wicked soul that will reject his son. The Bible says that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but he is so holy and so just that he can't let a lost sinner into heaven, no matter how much he might love that person. As Christians, when we run into trouble and heartache on this earth, our natural instinct instinct is to call upon God and say, Lord, save me. And even when a lost person is in a tragedy or in a near-death experience, most of the time their first reaction in that time of trouble is to say, Oh, God, or God, help me. And the scary thing about hell is that God forsakes you and you can't call on God in hell. If you have breath, if you have life left, then you have hope. But if you get to hell, there is no hope. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The book of James says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. So you could die today, you could die tonight, you could die tomorrow. Don't count on having more opportunities to be saved because you could die today. But as long as there's breath, there's hope. And you can be saved today if you will come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him. But next we see the cross is another picture of hell because of the humiliation. And one of the purposes of hanging men on the cross was just for that humiliation. Jesus Christ was naked when he hung on the cross. Matthew 27, 35 says, And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. They also mocked him by putting a crown of thorns on his head and yelling, Hail, King of the Jews! 
And this picture is the sinner in hell who will be naked. You came into this world naked, and unless you get clothed in a white robe from God, you will go naked into hell for rejecting God's Son. Job 1.21 says, And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You will wallow around in hell, clothed in nothing but the filthy rags of your own self-righteous works that you relied on to save you. And imagine these big, rich, upper-class people who will be less than a drop of a bucket when they plunge into hell. Many times we say a person is going to bust hell wide open. But really you will be so small and in insignificant that you will fall into hell like a drop in a bucket. And the humiliation of going from being a big, high-class citizen to being a nobody in hell is going to be a big humiliation. If you reject Jesus Christ, then you're going to a place where you will have no love from anyone. And people will see you just as another wretched sinner in the fire that's just like they are. Lazarus begged the rich men for food when they were on earth. And when they went to hell, the tables turned and the rich man then begged for a drop of water on his tongue. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. The tables turned. Imagine the humiliation of that. And next we see that the cross, Jesus being crucified, is a type of the, or a picture of the sinner in hell because Jesus Christ went to the cross of his own free will. Just like Jesus Christ willingly went to the cross, a man will go to hell of his own free will. John 15 says, John 10, 15, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 17, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. And then verse 18, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. So God laid, or Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, lay, voluntarily laid down his life. He wasn't forced to die on the cross. He did it of his own free will. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He will even put roadblocks in your way on the way to destruction. He doesn't want you to go to hell. On your way to hell, you will see churches, gospel tracts, street preaching signs, soul winners, and the list goes on. If you go to hell, then you choose to go to hell of your own free will. Ezekiel 33.11 says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Have you ever thought about the horror of opening your eyes in the torments of hell, knowing that you didn't have to be there? And when you wake up in hell and realize that place was prepared for the devil and his angels and not for you, because hell wasn't supposed to be for you. You went there of your own choice. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, according to 1 Timothy 3.16. He left the riches of heaven. He left the throne of his own free will and came to the sinful world as a fully God and fully man. He went through the troubles and trials that a man faces. He was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. He went through the pain and sickness. He went through hard labor. He went through homelessness. The Bible says the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He didn't even have a place to lay his head. He went through all that stuff so that we could be saved. He hath made him to be sin for us that knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And if you walk over the cross and go to hell of your own free will, then you will spit in the face of God who took so many steps down and made the perfect sacrifice so that you could be saved. But next we see that Jesus was crucified and darkness covered the land. And this is a picture of the sinner in hell because of the darkness. Matthew 27, 45 says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land into the ninth hour. I believe this shows a connection with Calvary and hell because many times the future lake of fire is described as outer darkness. Matthew 8, 12 says, But the children of the kingdom 
shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then said the king to his the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew twenty five thirty, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there's going to be a lake of fire on earth. That's talked about in Isaiah 34 during the millennial kingdom. There's going to be a lake of fire that men get tossed into at the great white throne judgment. And this is described as outer darkness. And 2 Peter 2, 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So right now in hell, there are angels in chains of darkness. 2 Peter 2.17 says, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. You can make reservations in hell. And darkness is in hell. Uh, notice while reading the Bible that darkness seems to always be connected with something negative. Ever notice how a good majority of sin is done in the dark? Ever notice how children are almost naturally afraid of the dark? Many people who listen to wicked music will wear dark clothes. And what color of clothes is associated with death? Black. People wear black clothes at a funeral. Uh, the Grim Reaper is always shown wearing black. The most wicked things done by man are on the dark web. So, I believe that's another picture of the sinner in hell is because Matthew twenty-seven forty-five. It says, now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And next we see that when Jesus died on the cross, men agreed with him being crucified. Even though he was an innocent man, they agreed with him being crucified. And John nineteen fifteen says, the people cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. They believed that he should be crucified. And this is also true for the sinner who will be tossed into the lake of fire. At the great white throne judgment, you are going to have millions of believers who are like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And you will then be cast into the lake of fire. And since all of these believers will be like Jesus Christ, they will have a mind like Christ and will be in agreement with him having you tossed into the lake of fire. Right now, as born-again believers, we would be in mourning and weep over people going to hell. But one day, we won't have that same feeling about justice being served. God is merciful and loving and gives every person a chance to accept his son and be saved. And at the same time, God is very just, and he can't let a Christ-rejecting sinner into heaven, no matter how much he loves that Christ-rejecting sinner. So it is perfectly just for him to let Christ-rejectors go to hell fire and in our glorified bodies we will realize this and we will be in agreement with god having people tossed into hell but if you aren't saved i hope this study has made you realize the importance of salvation and you are going to die one day hebrews nine twenty seven says and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment and the reason you have to die is because of your sin Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You will die physically, and then one day you will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20.14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So you die physically, and then you die again after that. And thank God that He died for us in our place, and He died for our sins. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died for me. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you can read about this in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then in Romans 5, 6 it says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We are all ungodly sinners, and our only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to be saved from hell and from your sin and have those sins taken away, then you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 
and you don't just believe he's a real person and that he existed. You trust in what he did on the cross to pay for your sins and quit relying on your own good deeds to pay for your sin and rely on Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross, how he shed his blood for your sins. And by doing this, if you'll put your trust in him, you can be saved and have eternal life. You no longer have to worry about going to hell. You no longer have to worry about where you go after you die. You no longer have to worry about going to the great white throne judgment. You can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.